This is a very quick warning for you guys that suffer easy arousement over great looking golf equipment for not that much money. You should probably turn this video off. For the rest of you, these clubs are outrageously good looking. <laughs> I guess there's only one more question to ask and how much do I think these are actually worth? Guys, how are you doing? Welcome back to a brand new video and what a video I have for you today. I went on a three and a half hour round trip last night to the other side of London to pick up these golf clubs that I have in my bag just behind me. Before I show you them in the flesh, in the daylight, because the daylight just does them justice. I hope the camera picks them up as well as what they are in person. But I'll show you the listing. Honma Golf Clubs, 100 pounds, eight of them. And from the photos, on Facebook, they're nothing special. They look like a normal set of irons that are probably 15 years old. Well, they are, 2009 specifically, these clubs came out. But when I see Homma and I see a little glitter of gold on the back of them, I normally know that they're gonna be something special. If you like this video, please leave it a like. If we get a thousand likes, that'd be incredible. Just for the achievement, my three and a half hours, it cost me about two grand in petrol to go to the other side of London with the petrol prices at the moment. If you wouldn't mind leaving this video a like, I'd really appreciate it. Subscribe if you are new. And um, yeah, let me show you the clips from last night. Um, uh, yeah, I'm excited to show you these in the flesh. Right guys, good evening. Um, I'm sure I've done an intro to this point. So um, uh, obviously we're pretty much centre London, well, kind of East London, not centre London by any stretch of the imagination. Um, as you can see, you can park a car, so we're definitely not in the centre. Um, uh, just gonna go and pick up these Honma irons. I'm really excited to know what kind of star they are. Um, I'm hoping more than a one. I presume it's gonna be like two, three, because there's not too much gold on them. Um, and also that they're genuine. So I've kind of done a bit of research online had a look at a few photos, tried to compare them, but I don't think you would necessarily, when these came out, which I believe is about 2009, something like that, so probably about 14 years old, um, uh, there wasn't too many, especially the Homer ones. I think nowadays you kind of see tons of Homer, and you see tons of um, uh, Miura and all those kind of um, Japanese brands and quite a lot of counterfeits, but this day and age, I don't think there was. Um, uh, but 100 pounds, almost eight clubs, that's so like 10 pounds a stick. These things would have been worth fortune regardless of what they were. So um, let's go and have a look. Let's go and see them in the flesh. Let's see what kind of flex they are, what star they are, and um, if they look as good as the photo showed. Boys and girls, <laughs> I don't think I've held a set of clubs for 100 pounds that look better than this in my entire life. Look through the um, uh, like obvious signs, let's say, if they they weren't going to be real. Um, the serial number on the ferrule is like normally the main one. The Homer Brez um, version golf clubs have always got the serial number on the um, ferrule rather than the golf clubs themselves. As you can see, uh, see made in Japan stamped on the back of it, which was another tail. And again, they just look class. You can't make a fake that looks this good. The way the gold gleams on the back of the heads just looks um, superb. And these are proper. Well, like with any Brez, I hope I'm pronouncing that right, just scream like businessman golf clubs. Stiff flex, which is an absolute win. These are two star, I'm gonna obviously show you better tomorrow when you can obviously see them in the daylight, but stiff flex, two star golf clubs. They're better than the one star, hoping for three, but again, I'm not gonna complain. They're in great condition. They need a bit of a clean, so they will look fantastic in the daylight. What an unusual little deal for the channel. We haven't had one of these for a very long time, and um, I'm very excited to give these a hit tomorrow. Guess I'll be catching you in a second when I'm back at Sanford. There will not be a single difference taken it throughout the majority of this video as these things are so precious 10 iron into the par 3 down here at Sanford and the only way I can describe these clubs um, uh, just from a glance I've only hit them once but they're just precious they're more art to me than actual golf clubs I try and cut the BS with this channel I'm not telling you these are the best things in the world or that they're even worth an absolute fortune but I can also appreciate the art and the history behind these golf clubs of what they would have been and how rare that they are now especially in the condition that they are the only way I can describe this find is like watching American pickers and they go into the back of a barn and they find an old Aston Martin in outrageous condition with all the parts there and is it the fastest most comfortable car on the market today no 
but it is something completely unique that potentially will take some golfers back 20, 15 years ago. Yes, and that's where I see the value in these clubs. Two nice little shots down the 26th on the lakes here. Five iron followed by a seven iron. And the more I get to use these golf clubs, and I don't know if it's necessarily the placebo effect. I want these to do well because I got them at such a good price and they would have sat there on Facebook, I think, for quite a long time. But these are the epitome of this channel because these aren't hyped up and I think that these would have sat on Facebook for quite a while until potentially the price got even lowered and someone actually came across them and knew what they were. For a lot of people, these aren't gonna be the best golf clubs. And yes, it's probably just great content for me. I was the right person at the right time to grab a hold of these, but they are far ahead of their time. The way I'm hitting these and the forgiveness and the feel and the stiff graphite. I mean, stiff graphite nowadays is is pretty much everywhere. You can get it in Callaway, you can get it in TaylorMade, you can get it in Ping, whatever it might be. But back in 2009, it was a very expensive commodity. And obviously brands nowadays are fighting to give you the most. Whereas back then, yes, of course, it was extremely expensive. But you are potentially now, for a hundred pounds, getting great value on a set of clubs that's probably doing just as well as a lot of other cavity backs or let's say muscle back irons out on the market. These, for me, if you're off, I don't know, 10, 11, 12, and you were probably off three or four in your 40s and 30s, whatever it might be, would be a great addition. The reason I like these is because these make you think outside the box. I'm not always about the hype. I don't want the Taylor made the pin Callaway, Strix and Mizuno that's just come out because everyone wants them. But back in 2009, clubs like TaylorMade Burners, I'll get you a price list right now. Well, what TaylorMade Burners 2009s are going for on eBay? And I bet you it's probably about 180 to 200 pounds. Whereas these, if they went on auction on eBay, maybe not after this video, but before this video, as I'll show you some prices here, for example, would probably go for a similar amount of money. When uh, the thought, the process, the craftsmanship, the aesthetics, the condition that these are in, far surpass the manufactured, machine-built, tailor-made burners, Mizuno MX 200s, Bridgestone J, whatever it would have been, all the clubs, Nike VR irons, that all came out in 2009. And the reason I'm and the reason I'm in love with these is because a lot of people would have definitely overlooked them. Absolutely flushed that shot down the middle, and that just felt so nice and balanced throughout the entire swing, and felt absolutely unreal off the club face. And it makes total sense. I mean, what you've got to remember back in 2009 is ball flight laws were still being debated. I mean, Trackman, GC Quad, all that kind of stuff nowadays. There's no question. All the data's there, as well as all the machinery, the AIs, your tailor your Callaway, all that kind of stuff. They've got so much money to throw into R&D and machines and AI and technology. I pretty much like to think with all the RNA rules, we are at the peak. I can't see equipment getting any better. Hence why I keep saying five, six, seven year old equipment is just as good as what is coming out at the moment. But back in 2009, it's no surprise that the Japanese, with all their history, culture, heritage that comes around forged metal, building samurai swords, you name it, no wonder they were far ahead of anyone else when it comes to building irons. And when you combine that with money is not an option, and you get free reign to build the best golf equipment you can, I like to think that actually they did. And even 15 years later, it's still up there with a lot of forge equipment that's coming out this year. Obviously, I haven't quite got the yardage down with these clubs as I have 170 to the flag. I've hit downhill seven iron, half swing and absolutely flushed throughout the back. And the strike was outrageous and I thought it was gonna be pin high, but that's out the back. So that is my round pretty much over. I guess there's only one more question to ask and how much do I think these are actually worth? Just the way they sit in the bag on top of each other as well. Anyway, enough talking about that. When it comes down to price, it's a really difficult one for me because I know after a lot of research and looking that these are probably, um, uh, they're only set in England, no question. Now, obviously there's extortionate prices across the world for these particular irons and would I recommend you spending that kind of money on these clubs? No, because you might as well go and get fitted for a brand new set. As I say, technology is caught up with whatever this is. 
However, with that being said, I've kind of got to look past the actual golf club aspect of it. Um, and realistically, how much do I want to sell these for? Because I'm in two minds of just putting these in the bag for the rest of the year. Um, as I haven't really got a heart set on the clubs themselves. Um, uh, but they're not, they're not really my profile. I mean, even though they are stiff um, uh, graphite, these are very, very high launching for myself. Um, and I probably will need something stiffer as the year goes on. Essentially, I bought these for £10 a club. I mean, it's eight clubs. I bought them for £100. Add in the £30 fuel, so £130. So realistically, it's probably safe to say I spent £15 a stick here. The condition, the shaft, the grip, the rarity. Um, uh, I would like to think that these would be worth about £40 a club. So uh, £400 in total, which is obviously a great return, but it was more of a case. The reason I was so excited to pick these up was more of the video. I wanted to show you guys um, with a bit of knowledge and the reason I tell you guys what old clubs work and what new clubs to stay away from and potentially where to save money and what can go in the bag and what can't. These aren't the best golf clubs in the world, but they are very unique. No one else at your golf club is gonna be rocking up with them. And if they perform exactly the same as all the other golf clubs on the market, that's 500 pounds cheaper than anything else this year with a bit of a story, something a bit shiny, then uh, I do feel that is a bit of a win. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts though. So guys, there you have it. Look out for Honma golf clubs. Ironically, Honma, like the newer stuff, doesn't particularly do that well on the second hand market. Um, and actually, to be fair, the Perez version on Facebook doesn't do that well either. But it is something unique. And if you do ever in your lifetime get to try, test, hit one of these, um, uh, potentially you see a job lot of golf clubs on eBay or Facebook and you go, hang on a minute, I watched Simon's video and he said anything with Honma and gold is probably going to be good. We go and pick those up and give them a hit. If you like this video, leave it a like. Subscribe if you are new. Catch you guys there.